All right, that's goodbye from Paran, and we'll definitely be back soon. I love it here. Yeah, this is this is one of our favourite places in well, all of Europe, I think. Oh, it's fantastic here. Yeah, the people are really friendly. The town's got so much character, and it, yeah, it's clean at the same time as having that rustic feel. I think we're big fans of Slovenia in general, aren't we? We we do really like this country. Yeah, we do. We do like this country a lot. We always have a good time here. Anyway. Today's plan is not going to be so exciting, so to say, but we're just going to be jumping on the Italian motorways for approximately two hours as we head to Vienna. Not even Vienna, Venice even. <laughs> Venice, that's the one. And uh, we'll see how many times we get beeped at the toll booths. I'm guessing four times in two hours, I'm thinking. That's my prediction. Yeah, I think so too. So maybe I just need to check. I haven't put Vienna in the sat nav and I do have Venice in. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at you. I set up the sat nav and I put Venice in. <laughs> Fair enough. All right then. Here we go. One last little look off Puran. As we're leaving, we just saw a small pebble beach. Maybe if you walk a little bit out, there is a car park here as well. But this is where you kind of have to scoot past the barrier. <laughs> yeah, I think it's free for motorcycles. <laughs> Right, on the road again. Let's get some air. 28 degrees and it's only going to get hotter. Some of you might actually be wondering why we are going on a motorway slog from Puran to Venice and not doing like the roads or whatever. There's two reasons. One, we want to get to Venice. And the second reason is this region from Puran to Venice is very, very industrial. Like the coastline is just full of shipping areas and so you pass through a couple towns like Corpa and Triste in Italy and basically it's just very very industrial we have done it before and you can kind of see it from the motorway um, and it'll just be a lot of stop start stop start stop start on um, traffic lights roundabouts and we think it's just going to be easier for us to jump on the motorway that way wouldn't you agree Sean? Yeah sounds good for today it definitely makes sense especially regarding the time limits that we've got and yeah I mean Venice is a nice place and they want to be able to have as maximum time as they can there but I would love to spend a little bit more time on this peninsula it's really beautiful there's so many similar cities to Paran around here yeah it's true and there's a couple of nice little rides out around the coastline too that's two hours 15 on the clock let's go to Venice so we've been on the motorway for two and a half hours, very busy, loads of trucks and sweltering hot. We're at 35 degrees at the moment and we're just about to take the exit to Venice. Here we are. Welcome to Venice. It's not the grandest of entrances until you get over this bridge and then it's a complete change. It's absolutely spectacular after this bridge. But it's not so difficult. I think there's parking for bikes and things right at the end. Actually, you can see the P from here. So now we're on the big, long bridge road all the way to the most, one of the most famous places, I think, in the entire world, Venice. City of canals, incredible architecture, and also known as the Sinking City. And it is, albeit a touristy place, still one of my most favorite places I've ever visited. We just follow this round, I think. This one, Garage Saint Marco. That's the one. I can't remember how. Oh yeah, fifteen euro for twenty-four hours. Perfect. Yeah. Not too bad prices, really. All right, so we just pulled in the San Marco car park garage. They're just checking if they have enough room for us to stay for 24 hours, and it's 15 euro. I think I showed you the um, the price list on the way in, but we've parked here before, and it's really secure, and it's um, the closest kind of you can get to the city. So hopefully we won't have to lug the panniers too far. Hopefully not. There is actually free parking just before you get to the car park area, but yeah, for 15 euros, you might as well have the bike safe overnight. We have arrived in Venice, parked at the San Marco um, car park garage. They have little bike spaces, which is really great. So we've stripped off immediately. Sean's just packing up the final things. We've grabbed the Touratech liners out. We're gonna carry those to our hotel and put some stinky socks <laughs> on there. And we've chained everything 
up with a little chain on it, but this car park is um, monitored all the time, so it's a really good place. And for 15 euros for 24 hours, it's a real bargain too. The next task, which is always the task in Venice, is to try and find your hotel through the winding streets. I'm gonna be the navigator on this one. The guys are um, carrying all of the luggage. It's great because we're only using two panniers and we've left all of our like helmets and suits and everything in the Touratech Zigeo cases and just locked them up, which is awesome. So now I need to navigate our way to the hotel, so gonna engage my brain and see if we can get through the maze that is Venice city centre. <laughs> Quick shower, checked in the hotel and we are out. We don't have too much time in Venice so we have to make the most of it. Yeah. But it's hot as it has been all week. But look, we're on the Grand Canal on one of the main bridges, not the Rialto bridge just yet. We're gonna head off into the maze that is Venice. We're gonna search out some dinner, some or two hotspots, a few hotspots, and then maybe make our way all the way to um, Marco Polo's car, isn't it? I think so, maybe later tonight when it's cooled down a bit, but everyone's a bit hungry at the moment. Everyone's so. hungry, everybody's really hot, and everybody that's coming on a day trip is now leaving Venice. So this area by the train station gets super right, busy. Good point, it's a bit chaotic. So hopefully it'll calm down a little Definitely bit. Definitely will. As will the, the temperature, and we can enjoy the evening in Venice.
very happy today to be waking up in the beautiful city of Venice. Yeah, we had a little wonder last night. We got to see quite a bit in the few hours that we had. We had a lovely dinner out last night and then we got back to our hotel and woke up to another beautiful day in Italy. Yes, so this morning we woke up at 7.30. We've done a little route through Venice all the way to the square here. We're going to go see the Bridge of Sires and then just wander back. We want to hit the road around 10.30 because today we'll be heading to Verona. We are now at the Bridge of Sires, which is a great place to grab some photos. But there's a lot of work going on in this area at the moment, which is nice because they seem to be restoring a lot of it. But what would Sean and I recommend for Venice? We've been here multiple times now, and it is a place that we absolutely love to come and visit. But we do have a few tips for you. Venice is best for us in the winter. That way you're getting a lot more bang for your buck when it comes to hotels, as well as the fact it's not half as busy. Sean and I have come here here in the winter and had the best time felt like we had the place to ourselves however we're now here in July and it's a little bit too hot for us and it's very very busy every corner you turn there is a tour bus or a tour group so we definitely would recommend that you come in the winter as well is if you can't afford or you don't want to stay directly in Venice there are great options on the mainland and the train system here in Venice works really well you get off the train right at the start of the city and you can spend the whole day wandering through that could help if you're on a more budget friendly trip and what we have done before the other awesome thing about arriving on motorcycle is you get to have the um pretty awesome ride in which you cross the big bridge and then you have this view of uh, Venice in the distance which is pretty awesome the other thing that we would recommend is definitely please be careful in this city there is hundreds of pickpockets and sometimes it can feel like everybody is out to get you there is a lot of theft as well as a lot of people getting ripped off with things so please keep your wits about you when you're in the city and be on high alert so we've just walked past the public transport sign and I wanted to show you guys the prices because hopefully it will help you. We have 15 euro here to get to the airport and a few of the prices for the different public transports. Gondola ride 30 minutes is 32 and you also have a few tour options as well. So there you can see the ish prices so you can help plan your trip. Sean and I are now walking along the top of Venice. I'm gonna head and swoop back in towards the Rialto Bridge. We need to grab a coffee in Venice. It's just one of those things that I wanna do. I wanna have an espresso in a tiny little bar in one of the off streets, and then we'll make our way back to the hotel, possibly grab some breakfast as well, and then head on the bike towards Verona. So here we are at the Rialto Bridge. There are shops on the inside of the bridge as you walk all the way through. Apparently about 20 years ago, they were open on the outside as well, but now you can only access them through the main walkway in the middle. It's very busy here. It's totally worth coming. You've got to see the Rialto when you're in Venice. There's loads of restaurants around here, but I wouldn't recommend you stop. Keep on moving, go into the center, into the winding streets to find your coffee, because that's what we're going to be doing next. If you're going to travel to Venice, I would suggest try and get a hotel as close as you can to the train station or to the car park which you're going to put your car or bike in as it's uh, going to save you quite a trek. We saw today a lot of people hauling some big suitcases through the town and they didn't look like they were having fun. So pack light, maybe leave everything in the car or the bike and just bring your essentials for what you need for the couple of days you'll be here. We stayed in a hotel just behind me there and it's just a no, two minute walk from the train station and about a five or 10 minute walk from the car park. So we're gonna haul our bags, well, what little bags we brought, back to the bike, pack them up and we can head off. We should be on the road within half an hour. We also left our helmets and our jackets by the bike. We chained them up to the bike and it's undercover, so they're gonna stay clean. Anyway, we're gonna head off now because we're off to Verona and it should be a hot ride, but it's only gonna be an hour or two. Can we find Sean? There he is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beast of burden. Despite me saying before that we travelled lightly into the city, our guests didn't travel so lightly. <laughs> so we are wandering back through. We've got the canal just on this side of me and the train station is also here, which is probably where a lot of you will arrive in the city of Venice. It is hustle, it is bustle, it is so flipping busy and it is even hotter. I think it's already at 35 degrees and we are at 10.30 in the morning. I am super super hot and we're about to put on full bike gear helmets gloves and everything for an hour and a half ride it is to verona but i'm sad to be leaving venice it was short but very very sweet and now we're going to be heading on to one of my maybe my second 
second or third favourite city in Italy, the beautiful city of Verona. He's feeling the burn, guys. It's been a full, uh, full 10 minute walk uphill. This is why we say no wheelie bags in Venice. No wheelie bag, I would like a wheelie bag. <laughs> All right, Venice, it's been hot, it's been sweaty, it's been awesome, but it's time to move on. <laughs> it is time to move on. They they tried to rip us off with parking there, but uh, didn't get past them. <laughs> yeah, make sure that you check your entry and exit times because if you're there for over 24 hours, the price increases. So 24 hours is 15 euros, so keep an eye on your timing and yeah, watch out for everybody as always. But yeah, time to leave Venice. All right. One last look at the, the canal and we're off. We'll be back. We'll definitely be back. Absolutely, yeah. A great place to visit in the winter time. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a November, January winter destination where it's not this stinking hot. Yeah. 10, 30 and 30 degrees is uh, not fun in a full, oh, full not kit. Not at all. As they say, arrivederci. All right, ta-da now. Oh my goodness, what is he doing? motorway and have paid our eight euro seventy to uh, do a hundred kilometers and now we are arriving in fair verona <laughs> we have arrived in o fair verona we walked in just before and we came straight to juliet's balcony because one it's the busiest place here in verona and it's also the most iconic we come here every time we're in verona and as you can see so does everybody else here is the hordes of people and there is the supposed Juliet's balcony. Personally, I don't believe that it's Juliet's balcony. I have my own interpretation of the story as does everyone else. But it is really nice here because you can leave your note or you can go up and see um, the balcony. You can go inside the house um, and then you're back onto Main Street where all the markets are and that's where we're going to be heading next. There's one more tradition at Juliet's balcony and that is to rub Juliet's boob. Can we say boob on YouTube? I think it's breast is the term. Breast? <laughs> but yeah, this is what people come to do. And as you can see... Um, this guy, that guy's having a grab. <laughs> I have to say, like, I came to Verona for this. The first time that I ever came to Verona, Sean brought me and all I wanted to see was Juliet's balcony. And we came in the winter and there wasn't all of the hordes of people that there now is here. And it was a much more enjoyable experience and very romantic for me and Sean and for you and your partner when you come um, but it is really nice to come and visit you have to do it make sure you be respectful a lot of people are writing on the walls here and um, which is just it's just wrong it's still an architectural site so this is the entrance this is the outside of it come in through these doors and then you'll make your way to the balcony <laughs> through all of the people then walk up this street that we're on now and this is the main section of Verona right here. On the square here is a really cool bar that we've been to a few times before. We're gonna go now where I'm gonna be getting my favorite drink which is the Shakatero. So we are at Cafe Filippini which is a cafe and a brasserie here in Verona and my favorite place to get coffee. I've just ordered my Cafe Shakatero, my shaken coffee with a little bit of sugar because it is my favorite drink. Just a tiny bit of sugar and it makes all of the difference. Sean orders um, a beer and we're gonna wait for our two friends to come and join us. And then we're gonna have a little mosey round of Verona a little bit more. Obviously we've been here a few times so we've seen all the main sites but we might wake our way up at the hill to the cafe on the top a little later. All right, my Shakatiro has arrived. It always comes in a martini glass. Oh, so good. 
But we chose a hotel outside of the city centre because it was a lot cheaper here in Verona, especially tonight because we're going to the Carmen concert. Everything was like fully booked. So we've jumped on our favourite mode of transport for the city. It's not my favourite. <laughs> my favourite mode of transport, the Lime scooter. Oh, it's green. And uh, we're just scooting back to the hotel to get changed for the concert tonight. And uh, these things can get some good speed, I'm telling you. Bob, good speed by like 10 kilometers an hour. <laughs> So it is 1.30 in the morning. We have just finished and come back from the Carmen concert. And now we are heading straight to bed because tomorrow we have another day on the road. We're heading to Garda and Como. So see you guys in the next episode. I am exhausted, but it was such an incredible night at the opera. We're in Lake Garda. We woke up this morning in Verona. We've rode some crazily busy Italian B roads to get here. It's a Saturday morning and we're going to be spending the morning in Lake Garda. There's loads going on, beeping, there's millions of tourists all wanting to go to the lake because it is 10 o'clock and 30 degrees, so it's going to be a hot ride. Yeah, already looks really nice here. We haven't actually been to this little part of the lake before. We've done a few laps around the lake in the past, but we've always missed this little peninsula. And I believe the famous castle on the water is on this peninsula. So hopefully we can go and find it and we won't miss it again. But yeah, looking like a nice day so far. Then after here, our plan is to end up in Como somehow, which we're not sure on the route yet. We have arrived in Ceremone. Ceremone. This is right um, at the bottom of Lake Garda, and it's where there is the Scalia Castle, and there's also um, an archaeological site here. So it's a great place to visit. I wanted to come for a really long time, but unfortunately, this trip has fallen on a Saturday, and Italy on a Saturday in these tourist attractions is just not fun. We've struggled for about 25, 30 minutes to try and find parking for the three motorbikes. There is a ticket inspector going around as well, checking that all the bikes have tickets and placing like 30 euro um, parking tickets on things. So yeah, that's not great. Um, as well as the fact that getting here was a nightmare, like so much traffic, people beeping at you for even trying to pull over. It just wasn't a lot of fun. It is beautiful here though, like you can see all around me is Lake Garda amongst all the cars, but it's just super, super hectic. So our friends have gone to see the castle. We're going to stay here with the bikes and the equipment and the stuff because it's already like 32 degrees. It's super hot to be walking in. Um, we parked Shadow here. He's all right, but I don't really want to leave him that much. So we're going to maybe just say maybe we'll walk in. I don't really know yet, but this ticket inspector is going around and to get a ticket is not just like put money in. You have to get like an app and make a phone call and it's just just complicated and a bit of an ordeal and I am complaining and I know it but what am I gonna do another 10 minutes have gone by and another three or four tickets on scooters have gone by um, and the guy is now just riding around and checking cars and stuff so we've stayed here Sean has managed to do one out of three bikes with the parking but it's taken like 20 minutes so yeah <laughs> it's a bit annoying here to find parking but I know I've seen pictures and done a lot of research on the two, well, the castle and the archaeological site that you can go and see here. And it is worth it. But on a day like today, when we're at 35 degrees in like heat and I'm in a full bike suit, it's getting a little bit like hot and uncomfortable. So I'm happy that our friends are going to go see it. And I want to come back here in the winter when it's quiet or in the autumn so we can really enjoy it. But I've honestly, there's not one like part of this car park that's not got like five or six bikes or a car pulled up on it it's just mania here i think we need to find somewhere a little bit more secluded for lunch because yeah i'm over this now 
Okay, so we managed to put a parking ticket on our bike and our friends came back and they've sat on their bikes. Um, so we've got to come to the castle that we've tried to see three times now and every time we've either rode past it or missed it on the trips. They're currently doing a lot of works at the moment on it, which is great to see and kind of cool as well because they've like, if I can show you guys that, thank you. They've blocked the water off so they can work on the underneath of it. But look how beautiful this is. There's a lot of people here today. Look at that. It's like a mini Dubrovnik, isn't it? It really is. And this is the entrance just through here. Oh, so it's, lot, it's a lot more than just a castle. It's a little town it's inside a little as town. well. I thought it was just a little, little castle. No, it's a whole town. Wow. This is really cool. Oh, look at this. That's awesome. Okay. We I might, yeah, yeah, we definitely have to come back. Is this one a, it might be a winter destination again? Definitely a winter destination. It's not that we like being cold, it's just we like being alone. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like being this warm either in bike clothes. It's, it's ah, yes. 35, it's hot. It's a little bit too much, isn't it? Oh, this is stunning. There's hotels inside here as well, so you can even say like right in, in the heart of it. So quite cheap. They were doing round boat tours of Lake Garda for 10 euros, which is I really good. good that. Yeah, they said a private one for like a family was 100 as well. So if you've got like a group of five or six people, that's yeah. actually really reasonable to be on your own. But look at this. It's so busy. Everybody is coming in and we are heading out, which I'm kind of glad about, to be honest. How did he get his car in here? <laughs> so we were just leaving, like I said, we've got two lemonade drinks. You can ask for them without sugar and they will make them fresh, which is what we did. They were four, four euros? Four euros, yeah. Four euros. They're quite nice, got a, quite a bit of a cake to them because they got no sugar. Yeah, they're very sour, but very refreshing at the same time. We have arrived in Como and it's the last night of this tour. We're heading back to Switzerland tomorrow, mm -hmm. but it's great to be back in Como. It's a lovely place. Mm. We did, however, have quite a sketchy yeah. ride to get here. The, um, we blasted on the motorways this morning because it was just so hot and there was so much traffic and congestion in the other places. But it was a little bit chaotic on the motorways. Honestly, there's people just pulling in in front of you, smash, slamming the brakes on, getting up to your back end. It's, it's, it's crazy quite chaotic, on there. Yeah. It's, it's not a motorway for you if you're not an experienced rider. Yeah. It is very difficult. And if you ride slowly on it, it's almost more dangerous than riding fast. It really is, yeah. We are riding in a group today. So as if you've ridden in a group, you know you need to keep everyone in line so you can follow each other. So it's, it's not as easy just to go blast off on your own. So yeah, you try and maintain a safe gap between you and someone pulls in, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, the motorway speed is 130 here, but on the fast lane side, most people are doing 150 to 160. And in the slow lane, even if you're doing less than 100, people are pushing you. Yeah, so. so it's, not an, it's not an easy, and then we turned off the motorway, headed on some B roads, and it was basically just as bad. And we've had a couple oh, of instances. Yeah, most, of, most of the people were yeah. good. We had one instance where uh, the guy just, got right up the back wheel of our, one of our guests and then he did the same to us and there was nowhere for him to pass. He got really, really aggressive and I really don't know why. Yeah, it was not a nice situation and we ride in Italy a lot, you know we do, and we wouldn't say this if we didn't think it was really like true that it's super difficult to ride here. And if you're not a confident rider and you've not done defensive riding, you might find it difficult. But we're here in Como now, which all is all that matters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Como was nice. And Como is a beautiful it's place. Gorgeous. And it's ideally situated if you either want to start a Dolomite tour here or end your Dolomite tour. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're planning on exploring some of the Swiss Alps, it's a nice little place to stay. It's, uh, yeah, it's not as expensive and it makes for a really nice evening out And there's here. loads of beautiful boat tours you can do and head out onto the lake. And the ride around the lake, which we actually did on our R1200 last year in the autumn, where we've ridden around the entire lake was beautiful. So you can also check that video out. We'll leave it in the description yeah. um, of where we rode down the lake. But today we're just gonna have dinner here. Yeah, we're gonna go to one of our favorite restaurants called the Middle East, which is not Italian, it's Lebanese food, <laughs> ran by a wonderful Lebanese family here that we've ate there before and it's fantastic. So we're gonna go and enjoy dinner there. Maybe have one wander through the city in the morning 
and then that will be tomorrow's vlog which will be we'll be heading back into switzerland and doing some incredible castles. yeah i think tomorrow i think it's going to be the furka pass the grimsel pass, Gotthard the Gotthard pass. Gotthard pass. yeah and those three are awesome enough, yeah we right? might even head via toon in slaken around the lake and then snake back up past Bern and all the way back to basel yeah. our home where we'll be dropping off the two higher bikes and finishing this tour and uh, that will be the end of this Swiss Dolomite tour, we call it. Swiss Dolomite, yeah, it was it was actually a really nice it was route. Really actually, really nice. Yeah. We spent ten days in total on the trip, and we've done around two and a half thousand kilometers. So by the end of it, we'll have done about two and a half thousand kilometers, and we must have hit over twenty passes. Yeah, uh, yeah, at least twenty passes. The Dolomites was full of them. Yeah. Also, what was nice on this trip is we've been to many of these places yeah. before, so. There wasn't so much pressure on us to take up all the must-see sites, so yeah. we could just yeah, we could just enjoy them a bit more and casual. And we definitely range. found a few more highlight places that we actually want to return to, which is always nice as well. The castle that we saw today on Garda is definitely a place I want to return to in yeah. the winter. In the winter time. But for now, let's head over to our restaurant that we like yes. really much. And here is one last view of Lake Como before it goes before the sun goes down. It is such an amazing place.